What will the smarter city of the future look like? What's the, what's the natural destination, as it were? It's really about people. It's about making a difference for people. And so if we look at the city of the future, I think the key thing is, how will the city of the future become a living fabric together with the people who are really the key users of the city? I'd like a cleaner city. Flying cars! I like less traffic. Make the life of the people more comfortable, more convenient, more easy. Yeah, going forward, you know, what will the high street look like in 10 years' time? Will we have, will we still have shops, or will we, will we all be shopping online? You know, will cars drive themselves? You know, will my health be monitored continuously? Try and encourage more people to leave the car at home. You just don't need them. There's, there needs to be a lot more public transport. People just need to be a bit more flexible and think a bit more before they just step outside and jump in their car our transport systems are going to change. The vehicles will probably look a little bit different, they'll probably be more aerodynamic, but probably the thing you won't see, which actually is the real difference, is they'll be using a multiplicity of fuel sources. We won't just have petrol and diesel engines on the roads. We will have electric vehicles, we'll probably have fuel cell vehicles by 2050. Uh, we will probably still have some inter internal combustion engine vehicles, as we do today, but they might be running on biofuels instead. The vision I have for a hospital that actually is a responsive hospital, an agile hospital responds to patient needs, is that a patient would arrive and their condition would be assessed and that would be inputted electronically and then all of that would be downloaded onto what we call patient wristbands, but currently they just have a written name on them. That would have a barcode on it that would contain all the information about that patient. So, for example, a patient can come into ED, they may then need to go to a CT scan, they then may need to go to a ward, and then after they've been assessed on that ward, they may need to go to actually, we have three hospitals across the city, might need to move to another hospital. Wherever they go, the information about that patient and the assessment so far would be all on that RFID tag. The cost of power or energy uh, should be uh, less. But the question is where will our power be coming from? And again, it's probably going to be a much more diverse set of sources, some renewables, there'll be nuclear in the mix, there'll probably be major cap carbon capture and storage plants putting CO2 out into, the, uh, in, into underground storage. But again, you won't see it in the city. So the fundamental changes are probably going to be under the surface, they won't be visible to the individual, but there'll be an awful lot of them and there'll be an awful lot of diversity which we have to manage in an integrated way. So how will the services, all of the instrumentation, all of the smart devices, all of the smart systems, how will we take all of those artefacts together with new technologies that we perhaps haven't even conceived of yet to create a better embedded living environment for people? I'd like to be more connected to my child's education, know more about what's happening within the education at school. Communication probably, making everybody aware when there's a problem and the reason behind, behind it. What I'd like to see for Peterborough in 20 years time through this sort of technology is people being able to, uh, through the simple click of a mouse or whatever uh, interfaces around it at that time, um, to be able to see how their city is operating on a day-to-day -day basis uh, uh, from a sustainability perspective. Is there a smarter workplace which I can work in, maybe working at home, don't have to go to office? I think in the future people will think about buildings as places for collaboration as opposed to just company entities. Buildings, even before they're constructed, um, contribute 40% of the carbon footprint here on Earth, which is worse than transport. My research is about developing new materials that are programmable and environmentally sensitive. So what that means is they'll have some of the properties of living systems. In other words, they'll be able to grow, sense the environment, uh, evolve, um, and, and even reproduce themselves eventually. The benefits that living architecture and organic architecture will have for the, for the future will be that these materials have a flexibility, an ability to surprise us that no other systems possess. People actually want to stay in the city, invest more in houses, um, roads, transportation. There's no other way. Everybody, I believe, realises you can't just stop everything. You can't just say to everybody, right, that's it, no more car use or anything like that. You can't do that. Um, but what IBM is doing is a lot of work to, OK, we're stuck with it. Let's see how we can make it better and make it safer and make it greener. Innovation really has been 
I suppose one of the, one of the bedrocks that, that IBM has been, has been founded on. But now we are we are certainly taking it to a new level. I mean, we we've had a strategy where we where we've been kind of pronouncing ourselves as, as the innovators innovator. But now we're we're applying that innovation on, on a worldwide scale. We are applying that to solutions across the whole planet. It's good to have the ability to contribute towards making uh, you know, the future better, and that what that that makes it very very interesting to uh, to work in this space. Thank you.